we come to work thinking we're going to fight every day. It takes 12 pounds of pressure to break the human penis. Do you think I'm capable of that? By hiring females and putting them in a male prison institution, I think that's psychological warfare, period. This is like raving meat in front of a shark. it again and we'll remember that when we heard this on the song before facility. They think that women are actually a tease. They, they don't think we should be here. Nothing anybody tells you or that you've seen on TV is going to prepare you for what you do with it. This is the worst of the worst, guys. We have some guys in here that never deserve to see daylight again. Some of these guys can put Stephen King to shame. Some of the things they have done, they're horrific crimes. Don't come in smelling so pretty and looking so pretty, and the nails. Keep those nails to a neutral color, short. Girls, if you cannot make a fist, you cannot hang on to your monadnock, you cannot use your pepper spray, you cannot punch them, because sometimes this is all you got. Just do the normal gig. Bring them out, strip them, start photographing them. We're human. Treat us like we're human. We're here to be punished, and we are being punished. Both feet in the box, support right underneath the chin. I'm here to give them what they've got coming and nothing more. I miss my freedom. I had a, a taste of it this last time I was out. Uh, just a small taste, you know, just a, a month. All right, gentlemen, let's go. I've got a, a son that's going to be turning nine years old. It breaks my heart every time I talk to him on the phone because, you know, he's grown up and I've been in prison. I have a 10-year-old at home. What happens if I don't come home today? What happens if during a riot an inmate stabs me? How do you explain that to a 10-year-old? I'm going to make sure that my staff's okay and that everybody walks out of here and goes home to their family. Okay, you're going to respect all the staff, especially the female staff members here. So you guys are showering. Female staff's in control or whatnot. All right, be respectful. We all have mothers and sisters or whatnot. Okay, be respectful, man. Respect us or they'll respect you. Bottom line. If there's assault on staff, I'm going to be right there. Because we're family. We have each other's backs. It's really us against them, you know what I mean? That's how they look at it, and that's how we look at it, you know what I mean? So that's what it is. And good luck, and welcome to Kern Valley. <laughs> Go ahead and give them the morning wake up. Thank you. Majority of my housing unit is in for rape and child molest and um, sodomy. The other 20% are in here mainly for murder. It gives you an eerie feeling every time you walk by their cell. Are they looking at you that way as they did their victim? I'm intimidated by a lot of them, a lot of them, but I can't let them see the fear or the intimidation. Once they see that, they play on it. Gomez, go ahead and let me in A section so we can release for chow. Thank you. ID? ID? Okay, I don't know that you have it. I want to see it. McGee, ID? Okay, we're going to have to talk later because now you're slowing us down. Chow's finally here at a decent time. We're going to try and get to yard on a decent... Uh, <laughs> but you guys got your warning. You got your warning. I, I, I can vouch for it. I heard it. How many times you guys gave us warnings and they didn't come to 9.30? Several. 
but welcome to prison. I decided that I wanted to become a CEO. What? Um, single parent. I knew the benefits and the income would benefit my daughter in the long run um, through her childhood. She was two and a half months old when I started my career, and um, this is what I've been doing. I'll continue to do it. I believe that we should not ever use a dining hall. It's way too dangerous. You've got that many inmates in there. You don't have that many officers. We're way outnumbered. Granted, we do have gunners on both control booths looking in the dining hall, but a dining hall is one of the worst places a riot can happen. It's so enclosed and so small, and you've got hard trays that these inmates have in their hands. They've got their cups. They've got hot coffee. They have stuff that could hurt you. I worry about getting injured every day, going home, asked to, if I'm injured, who's going to take care of my daughter for me? Um, it's something you worry about every day on your way to work, and the whole time you're here, you worry about whether or not you make it home to your family, the diseases that you can come across, whether, you know, you catch something and you take home to your family, too. It's something that's constantly on your mind, constantly. IDs. Okay. I want to see it. Thank you. ID? No, I wasn't looking. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't see it. I did. No, it is a daily routine. No, it's not when I'm here. It's a daily routine. Go ahead and take it down. Gomez. 102? The short guy? Yeah. What's his name? Okay, because we're going to have a talk. The reason I'm doing a cell search in this particular house is because upon releasing for Chow, he came out with an attitude. And you're going to come out with an attitude and disrespect me like that, then I will disrespect your house. So I take the stuff that he likes and holds dear to his heart, he'll understand my message. What I'm taking is contraband, stuff that's been altered, stuff that's been torn, state property that I can charge them for. About five years ago, um, a female friend of mine was raped by another inmate, and um, it really hit home. It was a reality check due to the fact that I had another inmate come in and tell me in an informant that he was, um, just scares me talking about it, that he was um, following both uh, the female that was raped and myself on the yard. Um, and it was basically, according to what he said was either one of us which one he was going to get first was how it was going to happen another friend of mine was assaulted on the tier with one inmate and was airlifted to kmc when i went and visited him at the hospital um i opened the door and one i didn't recognize him because he was pretty much beat beyond recognition and two when i did realize that it was him i immediately shut the door and just broke down in tears and thought why is this what I want to do? Go and fill in. I'm Carrie Sweeney. I'm an MTA. An MTA stands for Medical Technical Assistant. It's interesting. On a daily basis, um, you never know what you're going to have. So the excitement factor is there. You work with great people, and it, it's it's nice. It's comfortable in that sense. With oh, we've gotta go. Get the alarm. Bring the gurney up here. Guys, have a man down. Does this look like narcotics? Alpha A control, do you need a gurney? Bring the gurney up there. We responded over to the housing unit. Get a cuff on the hand. And we observed the inmate cellmate trying to wake him up. It appeared he may have had an overdose. Yeah.
The majority of the drugs that come into the prison are through our visiting. The visitors come in, they do remove their shoes, they do go through metal detectors, but they are not searched. Usually you would have the majority of the Hispanics with the black tar heroin. Marijuana is the majority of the blacks. And majority of whites have the methamphetamines. Nine times out of 10, that's how it works. They sell it amongst themselves. Drugs in prison is big business, lots of money. Who is this, do we know yet? Alpha 3 Control, Alpha 1. What's the name of that 1015 that was brought out of your housing unit? Hey, Long, we have an officer in route. Can you go ahead and hand down his uh, bed card to the officer? We're gonna need his ID. Uh, Does this look like narcotic? Huh? Narcotics? Yeah. Well, that's what, yeah, but you're gonna wanna check in between his toes and everything else. <clears throat> go ahead, pop that gate! They pull his celly out? Yeah, he's in the shower. They're searching the cell right now. Hey, Jackson, cuff him up, and we're going to bring him up front. How much is it? They did find the black sticky substance. We sent it out. It came back positive for black tar heroin, which is an opiate. And it's a very addicting narcotic. And it's very popular here in the prison. Hey, this is Lieutenant Billings from A facility. I still got his celly cuffed up. So do they want to come over and take a look at him, or what do they want us to do with him? And I had him stripped out, too. Lift your arms up in the air. Turn around. You don't mess around with the dope? No. No? He's going to receive a write-up for possession of a controlled substance. That is also a DA referral, so the DA for Kern County can choose to pick that up, and he could get additional time for that. Come on in the cell. Let me show you how we're living up in here, man. You know. Basically, you got to keep flushing when you're using the bathroom. It's awful up in here. You know, the man defecating, you trying to eat or you trying to sleep in something, you got to smell it. It's bad. And the vents is not big enough. You know, and then you got cold air coming through the vent. We have to block it off just to keep that cold air from coming in. And the sinks is not even powerful enough to really do anything. You know, you get clogged up, small little holes. That's all you got for your bed right there. You got your little pillow, you got your little thin mattress. This right here, if you got back problems, you're in trouble. When I got to come down, my feet is in his face. You see, I'm like, I got to step on the table. I got to jump down most of the time, and if I'm not properly balanced, I could mess around, break my, break my arm and leg. You got metal around here. This is all metal. You spin around here, bust your head easily. Look at the edges. It should be rubber on the edges, but it's not. It's, it's, you can easily slip and slide and bust yourself, man, badly around here. We got to hang lines up. They get upset with us for hanging lines, but this is the only way we can dry our clothes when we wash it. You see what I'm saying? Unless you want to wait on the laundry, which comes once a week, but you wear your clothes most often every day. It's not a party. It's not fun. We're not having fun up in here. This is very rough, man. And then what it is, when that door, if you can see when that cell door closed in here, it's awful because you know you can't get out. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's very bad. It's a mental torture because now you're locked in a box. It's basically like a coffin. physically abused. I was beat before I was even like one years old. My mother would fly into fits of rage because she'd look at me, she would get upset, hit me because I reminded her of my father. So she said that she feared for my life because she was beating me so much and then put me up for adoption. And my father didn't want nothing to do with me. So I don't know my mother. I don't know my real father. Be sure, right up. My sister was kidnapped and raped at the age of 10, and so I shot the dude that did it. I was 14 years old. It was the first time I'd ever been in trouble with anybody. 15. And I ended up taking a deal to where I only had to serve till I was 18 in the Youth Authority in Phoenix, Arizona. I got beat up a lot. But I don't think like the first year I went without a black eye. So I started learning how to fight, and I started to fight really, really good. And one thing led to another, and there's, you know, there's security in numbers, especially when you're young, you know? So I started running with these skinheads, and soon I, I became one. I got out, and I was 18 years old. 
and I decided I'd take the easy road of making fast money, fast women, fast cars. You know, it just it all comes in hand once you start taking advantage of, of all the illegal avenues that are out there. The next thing you know, I got the DEA knocking on my door, and I went to prison. I got tipped up in the prison gang. My whole life revolved around that. I was extremely violent in the prison system, stabbing people, and everything was all about promoting myself for the prison gang, promoting the prison gang, becoming the baddest Nazi lowrider I could be. So do you think people in the world will look at me and, and like still give me a chance eventually? Seriously? Yeah, it depends how you carry yourself. What if I just act like I'm talking to you right now? I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah. How what am I hiring mean? you to do, though? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> uh, mow your lawn? Mow your lawn? Sure. I mean, look, Withers is still relatively young, and he just doesn't have the kind of life experience to feel like he's good at maintaining a regular lifestyle. He's real good at doing the drug scene. He's real good at being a player. He's real good at all of that superficial, antisocial stuff. It's hard to sit there and just work 40 hours a week just for a sort of jump change, you know? So give me perspective about jump change versus lots of bucks illegally gotten. The jump change lasts a lot longer and you can't go to jail for it, right? That's right. The big bucks always gets me right back in here. And exactly. Where we're at okay, right now. So what did the big bucks cost you? I had to pay 10 years of my life. Okay. So now, what's the most important thing? Stay out. Exactly. To stay out and, and, and not come back. Freedom. Right? There's a high level of security here because they're higher risk inmates. So in order to get some degree of confidentiality and not shouting through the door, where other inmates can hear and where their cellmates can hear. I'll have them brought over to the cage and there's a fancier name for it other than cage, but it's a cage. I need to think about, instead of just wanting to get that quick money, just last it out and just work harder. Maybe work more overtime to get a little bit more money, see what I can do to make more money legally. Okay. And understand that, that this is how normal people live. <laughs> I guess. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense Lawful to me. Lawful abiding citizens. That's right. I think I, I think I got it in perspective this time. Inmates assaulted the staff. That was not me. He said I know we all look the here. same, but that was not me. And the guys get the exercise program is because keeping them locked in the six foot by six foot cell is cruel and unusual punishment. Slugs in your mug without the shell casings. My words crawl up under your skin like cancer do. My testimony touched the black folks like Panthers do. I throw money away on Gucci like them gamblers do. I smoke blunts bigger than Dookie, make money off of the Keep coochie. moving on the track, stay clear of that gym wall. Hips lift the tops off. I got plenty of coke and plenty of blocks for me to get my rocks off. Plenty of glocks for me to knock cops off. My name's Stevie Jackson, 40 years old. I've been in prison for two years. I've got two life without sentences, plus 27 to life for uh, two murders and two robberies. Uh, it's a pretty bad situation, seeing that I didn't have anything to do with the crimes, and they know it, but I'm here, so I have to deal with it. People think that we're having a good time in here. Like you're looking behind me right now. They're playing basketball, handball. We're out having a jolly good time. That's incorrect. That's a misconception. We truly are being punished. But the punishment, it's not so much a physical thing. You know, from my experience, the punishment, it's all mental. And it hurts. <laughs> it does. Even smiling right now, I'm smiling because I need to smile. Attention on the yard! Equipment recall this time! All basketballs and handball! My entire family. They always want to pat me on the back and talk about, Brian, you're so strong. You're really strong, you know, to be able to do this. I'm not strong because I want to be. I don't want to be strong all the time. Sometimes I want to cry. 
I'm strong because I have to be. You dealing with a gang of people that don't got nothing to lose. Some people ain't ain't, ain't tripping, but then you got some people that just threw. Well, I'd gone to turn in some paperwork, and I heard loud discussion coming from the library. So I went in to check it out. As usual, they're complaining about everything. By hiring females and putting them in the prison institution of a male prostitution, I think that's psychological warfare, period. Because me, myself, personally, all the women in my life done stepped on me. And then to have a female walk around here with a nice, beautiful body, knowing that she has the power over me because she's able to swing her little breasts and button whatever around here, that caused psychological trauma for Ooh, me, boy, myself, dude. as a man. Whoa. It's like raving meat in front of a shark. You see what I'm saying? The shark gonna try to get that meat, and I can't get that meat. So that causes turmoil within myself. It is not good for a woman to be working in prison. Bottom line. This is torture. How many men look at themselves as a shark and women as meat? It goes back to their mental state and how they process things. And I don't take it personal. For the most part, I've found that inmates in here enjoy having female staff around. They want to talk to females. Um, we're a communicator. And they, they know that. They're raised with women. And so they associate us with their moms, their sisters, their wives. And we actually bring a level of comfort to them that they don't get with a male officer. You know, they won't talk to a male officer about things that they'll talk to a female officer about. And it helps to ease up the tensions and stuff in the house. The reason that the guards and you guys have this uh, little line of communication and respect is because no, the inmates that. assaulted the staff. No, so I you're trying say to that. say that I you want us that. to be scared of all inmates not, and, and, and fear. That ain't what that. we said. I didn't say that. You what said you're saying? Why, you said that's why you and the guards were no, able I to talk. I didn't say that. That was not me. I know we all look the same, but that was not me. Crazy. Every one of you, when you come That's in here, crazy. are given the speech that when there is an alarm, you That's will crazy. get prone. They prone out so that we are able to easily identify who's involved in the incident. And they don't look at it as a safety matter. They look at it as you're treating me like dirt because you're making me lay on the concrete. And there's always some idiot out there wants to do push-ups, yep. yep. wants to crawl over here, be next to homie. Somebody behind me said, I have a stomach, chrono, bitch. You know that you're in a male-dominated environment. The and inmates are antagonistic towards female employees. I'm sure you've walked down a tier and someone said, bitch. And you kept walking. And you kept walking. You didn't go to that cell or, or a number of cells and say, Locked I'm locking all you guys. Okay, I gave but the you person that said head, it yeah. an so opportunity to come talk to me. He I'm chose not question, to. Though. So I handled it the okay. way I felt so best. So everything that she's speaking on right now, she's speaking out of emotion. She's not yeah. speaking on protocol. Yeah. She's not speaking on rules. Just because you don't know how to do your job as a professional. <laughs> yeah. That's why. You're standing you here. That's now, right. No, I know that it's right because you just dug the hole yourself. Their biggest complaint is that women are emotional, that we react on our emotions, that we cannot maintain our professionalism. You're running off at the what mouth right now. What does your Title 15 say about disrespect to staff? Why don't you look at 3278? I don't dwell on what these guys think about me because I'm not here for them to think about. I'm here to do a job. This is basically the Bible for the Department of Corrections. Okay. All employees who supervise inmates must have training designed to give them knowledge of emotional disturbances common to inmates and the use of such knowledge in ways which will minimize the need for use of physical force. Your actions that day did not fall up under this. I do try to keep myself grounded in that I realize that every one of these people wearing blue is somebody's kid somebody's dad, somebody's uncle, and I don't think that I'm better than they are or worse than they are. But this is my job. This is what I do. I didn't put them here. It's my job to keep them here. While you're I reading from this. that book, why don't you read Write Some Respects? Okay, but it falls in line with this. Would you like me to read it? Yes, please well, do. Sure. <laughs> Employees and inmates may use first names in conversation with each other when it's mutually acceptable to both parties. When it so is, is that mutually relevant? acceptable. Bitch is not my first name. Okay, well, this is what I'm saying. It takes 12 pounds of pressure to break the human penis. Do you think I'm capable of that? This is a new prison and we're populating it with level four inmates from throughout the state. A level four institution is designed for people that have basically committed violent crimes and once they come to prison, the violence continues. 
You got anything tattoos on your legs? Yes, I do. How about your other foot? That for back in the day when you used to kick people? <laughs> this one's a cover up. You know what it was? Yeah, I said cops. So was it that, oh, that what that said? Yeah. With the gang problems that we have in California, we have certain gang members that don't get along with other gangs. What faction is kids? Independent. Independent. Which means that we have to find out which gang he's in. What do they call you? Pig. Pig. Find out his status within his own gang to ensure that the housing that is chosen for him is a safe environment for him. I'm going to give you about three minutes, and I need you to find somebody to house up with when I send you over there. The main prison gangs is the Black Gorilla family, Texas Syndicate, Northern Structure, the Crips, the Bloods, La Emmy, uh, Nuestra Familia, Next two. NLR, which is uh, uh, Nazi lowriders. Uh, these are the main prison gangs that we have. Send a file line through the gate. I can walk anywhere because I'm a CO. The inmates can only walk in the designated areas that the other inmates have decided they can walk in. If there's a restroom that, the, say, the Southern faction has decided belongs to them, there's a boundary around that restroom. And if you cross that line, you're going to get tagged. The basketball court belongs to the blacks. You're not allowed to walk through a game or around the basketball because it distracts from their game. You're supposed to walk out around the track. And somebody brand new to the institution that comes in that's not aware of the inmate politics, they're the ones that always get hurt, and it's out of ignorance. I heard over the radio that there was two inmates fighting. We went inside, both inmates proned out. No spray and balls. What's your name? Are you hurt? No. They didn't give us any argument about anything. We cuffed them up, escorted them to the program office. We bring them back here to the clinic, and what I do is a body check. I need to make sure there are no injuries. Even if they state there's no injuries, I need to do a visual to ensure that they're okay. Back in. Hands above your head. We have in cell homicides. These guys fight, and sometimes we can't get to them before they kill one another. Go ahead and slowly turn around. Keep your hands above your head. How long have you guys been living together? Three weeks. Okay. Just a personality thing? No, we had no blows, and they were just pushing. Okay. A lot of times these guys get on each other's nerves, and they decide they don't want to live together anymore. All right, I'm going to have you to strip off okay. your boxers. We're going to stay in. I'm going to move. He's getting moved over to the lower yard. When they were told to stop fighting, they did exactly that. There was no force shoes, so it was pretty much, that was an easy, easy day. Hey Withers, I got some good news for you. What's that? I just got a fax in, and right. it looks like they confirmed your parole date for December 17th. So they're gonna let me go on Saturday? That's guaranteed. Three days. That's three more days, huh? So I need you to sign. You know the routine. Get up. Yes, ma'am. I'm left-handed. Oh, you're left-handed. Oh, I, I hooked it up, though. I just... Hey, Saturday? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I'm out of here on Saturday. Yeah. Fix yeah. the back of the cell? I know another king member. I know what I can do around cutthroats, murderers, and thieves. I'm comfortable with them type of people. Right. You know what to expect from them. You wanted to see me, right? Yeah, I'm having like some jitters again, dude. Okay. Yeah, because they're going to let me go on Saturday. I know. 
for watch is not picking me up. Who? All right, so I got this idea, right? Since I remember I was talking about I wanted to go to Nevada. I wanted to go see my kid real quick and stop in there. And I told you it's not a good idea. And I know it's not a good idea, but right. I'm sitting there thinking like this, right? I, I got to be in the parole office by 10 o'clock on Monday, right? Okay. I can take a bus right over into, into, into Nevada real quick, right? And, and see my kid for a day or so, have my dad meet me down there, and I just drive back. And come back. Risk coming back. This is what you want in your life? This is the priorities no, we talked about? I know, but you know well, what? No, 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 no. Don't tell me you know. Okay, no. I Don't know. tell me you know. We're right. talking priorities, right? Yeah. Okay, what's I, number one? Me. Staying out of prison. Okay. All right. So, so I, 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 I f that up if I go to, go to Nevada, right? Yeah, you just gave yeah. up your freedom. Okay, to go see my kid, which is still ain't cool. Are you going to get your parole officer to give you permission to visit your kid? Oh, my parole officer won't let me leave San Diego County. Okay, well, then you can't leave San Diego County. That's what happens when you have the life you have. Okay, Why but you I can't have a freaking babysitter Why? the whole time, though. You're wanting to introduce something that's going to put you at risk. So, know, so just go, go ahead more. and do that, right, I'll get and come back. Though. We'll see you again. Nah, that's all good. Back, well, then why are you introducing something that's going to put you at risk? No, I just want to see my kid. I haven't seen him in like six years. I understand. And he'll be there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Give him a call. Tell him to behave myself. I'll come see you when I'm free. Yeah. Or say so I'm going to call you because I'm, I'm fixing to go screw up and I'm not going to be around for a while. No, I'm not going to tell him that. Well, that's Why what you're doing. Why would I tell my kid that? Because that's what you're doing. No, I'm just saying if I go by there, you know what I mean? Okay, well, I, I guess I already know. I'd be violating my parole. Exactly. Shit, so. What we're dealing with is whether or not you really want to stay out there. Yeah, actually okay? I do. Or you're so scared that you won't make it when you want to that you're figuring out how to come back. And I understand Well, I got that. the drug problem, Lick. Okay. Stay away from that. That's easy to do. Okay. I got the work thing figured out. I started that last year. Okay. All right. But what are you going to do for fun? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Every time my idea of fun always gets me back in trouble. Exactly. That's why we're talking about what are you going to do so you don't get back in trouble. I mean, yeah. we both know you're scared, right? Yeah, I'm, okay. a little, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. scared to death to f***ing get out there and try to do it right. Exactly. I told you, I, can, I, I, I know what I can do around, like, cut cutthroats, murderers, and thieves. I'm comfortable with them type of people. Right. You know what to expect from them. Right. You know where they're coming from. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right here, I know where you're coming from. I know where everybody around me is coming from. Out right. there, you know what I mean? People, like, try to be nice and and I'm thinking they're trying to steal my wallet. It's not going to be easy, man. All right. It's not easy. It really isn't. All right. But I think you can do it. Okay. You have to decide whether you can or not. All right. I think you can. Perfect. But you got some stuff to work on, so you'll work on it. I'm cured. <laughs> okay, good. Good luck. All right. Escort! I see a lot of young faces in here. You're going to experience stuff that is going to shock you. You're going to have guys that want to show you what God gave them. They're going to be standing in the window, swinging around like a lariat, flipping the light switch on and off, trying to get your attention, smearing it all over the window. Okay? That is something that you have to deal with. And it's how you deal with it as to whether or not this individual will continue to try to get your attention. You can ask your, your floor cop to come up and relieve you. Come down, go right up in his face. Dude, look, check it out. I don't want to see your d If I see it again, I'm going to rip that thing off and stuff it up your d You can do that too. That works for me, but I'm a big girl and I can back that up. It takes 12 pounds of pressure to break the human penis. Do you think I'm capable of that? Every one of you have to find your own way with this. It's going to happen. They want you to get upset. They want you to cry. You really don't get your first taste of fresh air until after the van leaves and there ain't nobody around. I've been making steps in the last year and a half to change my life. I've disassociated myself with my prison gang. I've disassociated myself with a lot of my criminal ways. Most of them, actually. Actually, all of them. 
Hey, Bam! Yeah. Bam, Bam! Hey. hey, man, I'm out of here, dog. All right, man. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of that for you, all right? All right. I got that number right here in my phone book, okay? Hey, thank you, man. Two fifteen. Hey, Capone, you guys take it easy, huh? Right, I got the number right here. Don't trip. All right, All right man. All right, sweetie. Bye. Out there, okay? I promise I will. Okay. I think I'm gonna go surfing today. I don't dress like a convict out there. You wouldn't see my tattoos. I'm careful to make sure that doesn't show. And I let people get to know me, but as soon as I take my shirt off or they see me in a more relaxed environment, they're like, oh my god, you've been to prison. And then automatically, you know, I've seen them lock their doors, or sometimes they'll start looking around to see if anything's missing. Not everybody's a thief, but we're all human. You know, some people are just less human than others. I'm scared to death, man. Cause you know what, I'm going out there for the first time in my life and try to get my shit straight. I've been a gang member all my, all my life. I don't know, I, 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 don't, I don't know it. Yeah, I guess I'm to stay away from my old crowd, my homeboys, my friends, my neighborhood. You know, I could tell you how to be a criminal, I could tell you how to do everything illegal you want, but ask me how to act like a normal person in society, I have the faintest clue, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm nervous. Alright. I don't use drugs, I stopped using about a year and a half ago. Name and number? Destin Withers, K33276. You're clear. As a drug addict, you know, there were, you know, we're creatures of habit. If we go back to using drugs, we go back to the same old homeboys, the same old things, which brings me back to places like this. You really don't get your first taste of fresh air until after the van leaves and there ain't nobody around. All right, gentlemen, go ahead and step outside. Have your IDs and your money. Withers? Hey, that's me. Look, that's me with the hair. You know, I'm not even 30 years old yet, and I have a chance to, to start my life over. I, I've got a, a son that's going to be turning nine years old. It breaks my heart every time I, I, I talk to him on the phone because, you know, he's grown up and I've been in prison. How am I going to sit there and, and explain to him where I've been? I got the two strikes, and, you know what I mean? The next time it's for good. Try to hang up the guns and just try to be a family man, you know? I've got a kid out there that's nine years old gonna be nine in March. Haven't seen him since he was like eight months old. You know, I don't mind working. It's, it's not the easy money, but still, you know what I mean? I keep trying to tell myself I'd rather keep an honest day's paid and come back. I was a selfish, foolish idiot. I was a, I was a jerk. You know, I didn't care about anyone. I was too wrapped up in my own misery, you know? He's got a right to have a father, you know. That's all you do on this, okay? We got him up there in a cage. We're gonna do the report. I gotta call Captain Tyson, see if we wanna lock him up in ADSEG. You okay? Yeah. 
Today I was working in a control booth. Um, I let an inmate out for his normal shower, his normal time. Um, when he was in there, I noticed him posing at me, standing there not taking showers, just standing under the water posing at me with his front area exposed. There were some maintenance workers up here and I asked them, what is this guy doing? They looked and he continued to pose. Once they left, I told him to wrap it up and once they left, they see that the male maintenance workers left, he started masturbating at me, looking at me masturbating. I told him, I cut his water off thinking he would finish and get the hint, but instead he still continued to masturbate. Did you guys see anything at all? No. He was, he was telling us how yeah. uh, she was staring at him because he's well hung. Yeah. And, and she said that he, he did it, she told him to stop, and he just kept looking at her and started doing it again. When he came down, he did state it was because he said he was well yeah. so, and that's the excuse he gave for it. Oh, so he actually gave you an excuse? Yeah, uh -huh. he, said, he said she was staring at me because I'm well down. Okay, I gotta look at it and see what, he, what he's got priors for, because I'm not gonna put up with this. Sexual harassment, masturbation, indecent exposure is extremely common in institutions, and it's a way to control staff. Inmates like to get a reaction out of staff. Doesn't matter if it's anger or anything else, it's just a reaction. It's trying to control our emotions. That's why I don't react. So, you say you weren't doing anything? Oh, I can't even believe this shit. Like, this lady's been harassing me since I got out of the damn cell, yelling at me like a child, and then I come in the, in the shower and she turns off the water on me, man. Come okay. on. I got the soap on my face, so I get the boxes in the way, I put them on my face, and I'm trying to get all this up like this. What's going to happen right now is you're going to stay here in a holding cell for a while. We're going to talk to everybody that was over there, and then we'll make a decision. What the hell's your problem with me? I didn't even do nothing to that girl. I just come out of the cell to go shower, and she starts yelling at me, man. Okay. You know, we'll look into What's it. What's wrong with her, man? With that girl running all over the place, you on drugs or something? I am man. not going to stand here and argue with you because we're not going to tolerate that type of behavior. And every report I have right now, the only one that says you didn't do it is you. And every other staff member I'm talking to oh, says you have. Who, who said that? Who maintenance. Else? Maintenance man. saw you. Oh, hell no, man. Yeah, they did. So, man, you're going to be there a while. I know. Man. The whole thing is. The inmate might have thought I was mad, but I wasn't. If they can play games, so can I. It's a show. If I can convince that inmate that I'm irritated and I can write enough paperwork to make his life miserable, maybe he'll do what I need him to do. Find those maintenance guys, because I gotta have them. I want quotes on what he said to you, because he admitted to it when he said what he did to you. Yeah. Okay. I don't like so this. I don't think that any staff member, whether they be male or female, yeah. be subjected to this. And these guys will do it to the men just like they will the women. I'm going to do the paperwork and get it submitted. I'm going to make sure that my staff's okay. And we're all going to go home in the same condition as we came this morning. You know, they say that these cameras add 10 pounds. I don't need an extra 10. <laughs> This is a 40 millimeter direct impact weapon and we use this foam direct impact round. This is a multiple launcher here, holds several rounds. This is actually a multiple projectile that dispenses CN gas, it causes tears, it causes mucus. This is a CN smoke grenade. 